It's your boy, Max Mogren, and my ace the Mexican street mutt, live for you here at Wake Up News. Thank you so much for tuning in. Sorry we're a little later than usual today, uh, trying to get into it. Uh, wow, got a lot going on. Brian Peterson, what's up? Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you as well for your support on Patreon recently. Very much appreciated uh, with everybody. Joel Cleland, what's up? Thanks for tuning in. Big show today, a lot going on. Uh, I must admit, I'm experiencing a little bit of cognitive dissonance in my own brain today because there's so much going on and it's a little overwhelming. Good afternoon, Brian. Uh, big thanks to Brian, big thanks to David Coco Rico Sedano for supporting me via Patreon. Also, Evan Simpson uh, pulled the trigger there for three bucks a month. Thank you, Evan. Jackson's own Evan Simpson. A great dude. And thank you to Zachary Coons, the founder of Wake Up News, for ponying up six bucks a month to help out with my little adventure in reporting here at Wake Up News. Again, I started a Patreon page trying to make a living at this. I don't want to make a lot of money. don't want to get rich and famous, but I do want to keep the lights on, feed the dog, pay the bills, and so forth. Uh, crazy days, right? Serious serious things going on. I'm just sharing this to my own personal page and a few other pages now. I'm getting pretty savvy as I keep learning more and more about uh, how to do this properly on the interwebs. So thanks for bearing with me. Uh, show me some comments. You see in our headlines there today, we're talking about the situation in California, right? These wildfires up there, crazy, crazy wildfires. Uh, Dane Whittington at Geoengineering Watch has chimed in saying that it is the result of some, you know, it definitely follows from geoengineering programs that have contributed to the ongoing drought in California. If you look at the U.S. drought monitor, California is not officially in a drought anymore, but they've had a pretty dry summer after what was a pretty wet winter, so pretty unusual. Um, Thank you all for tuning in. Sherry Lawler Waltz chiming in. Do. Yeah, I'm going to drop some links in there. Uh, there's a good article here by Elena Freeland where she's talking about it on aircraft.org. So you're welcome to go check that out if you want. But let me give you just a brief synopsis of the situation. This just posted at the Washington Post a couple hours ago. I'm going to read a couple excerpts. At least 35 people have been confirmed dead in four counties, many of them elderly. Some burned to ashes. One victim was 14 years old. Um, taken together, the disastrous blazes, more than 20 in all since Sunday. Okay, 20 fires in California have been burning for the last week. Strangely, they all seem to have started pretty much at the exact same time or within about a five or six hour window. I'll give you a rundown of that in just a second. Uh, have these blazes have killed more people than any other California wildfire on record. The death toll is certain to rise as authorities, some accompanied by cadaver dogs, continue to explore the wreckage. Hundreds are still missing. Statewide, an estimated 5,700 structures have been destroyed, including whole neighborhoods reduced to smoldering rubble. About 90,000 people have been displaced by the fires, officials said Friday. Uh, it goes on and on. Interestingly, I'm going to drop some images into the comments there. And just to show you what's unusual about um, these fires, and you'll see it a lot in this imagery, you can go all over looking at various uh, websites, but there are a lot of images where there will be houses that are totally burned to the ground, like utterly gone to the foundation absolutely nothing left. And then right next to the house, there'll be another house that's perfectly fine, or there will be a tree still standing. I'm gonna drop another image there uh, into the comments. And again, these, these houses, you know, there'll be trees that have leaves on them still, right next to a car. I'm gonna paste that one in right next to a car that looks like it has been toasted, like, you know, extreme heat. And if you're not familiar with the work of Judy Wood in the wake of the 9-11 attacks, she posited the theory years ago 
that perhaps directed energy weapons were used to take down the Twin Towers. Now, I've been interested in that theory for a while, but at the same time, I didn't, you know, it's like 9-11 was an inside job. How exactly it happened uh, wasn't uh, of the most, the utmost concern to me, but I'm, post, I'm copying all these images and pasting them in here just to show you, to give you an idea of what we're talking about here in the California fires. Uh, here I'm dropping one in. It's too bad they're not showing up like that Washington Post image did. But basically, there's these situations where houses will be totally destroyed, and then right what next to it, to oh, sorry, right next to it, there will be a tree that still has leaves on it. And the house right next door, totally untouched, just unusual. I just dropped a video link there, too, to a uh, presentation at the Directed Energy Conference in 2013 by Dr. Judy Wood, where she explores some really disturbing evidence surrounding the 9-11 attacks. Uh, most blatant is that blocks away from Ground Zero, there were cars that were totally torched to the extent where the you know, it looked like, I mean, it looks like the thing went through a furnace, you know what I mean? Where the metal's bent, the tires are completely burned off, and yet these were in areas where there were no fires, you know? It's like these cars just burst into flames unusually. So I dropped that Dr. Wood in there. Uh, I'm going to drop a link to uh, Dr. Elena Freeland's book, Under an Eye and Eye Sky. It's not out yet, but I'm looking forward to reading that. And yeah, so I'm curious to get your comments on this situation um, because it's pretty wild. Again, the situation in California, very serious. I've got so many darn links open over here. Uh, it's kind of overwhelming. Uh, Geoengineering Watch, Dane Wigington. A lot of people disagree with Dane about how CO2 potentially contributes to climate change. A lot of people who are focused on the geoengineering and chemtrails issue are concerned that Dane could potentially be controlled opposition. But I got to say that Dane goes harder than pretty much everybody else. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, interestingly, too, uh, Bloomberg reporting today, California's wildfires are a deadly flip side of this year's rainfall. Long-awaited moisture created ideal fuel for horrific infernos. The conditions are just right and the recipe is just right. Okay. Another interesting thing about this situation, here's another image that'll show you what I'm talking about, where there'll be houses down to the ground. I mean, nothing left, absolutely nothing left. And if you go online and do a Google search for like house fire aftermath, you'll come up with all these images. It's pretty rare for a house fire to take something completely to the ground especially when there are trees and houses right next door that are not burned at all. Really unusual. So I'm curious to get your comments on that. I'm trying to paste more links in here, but it doesn't seem to want to let me at the moment. There we go. Here's some more images from Business Insider where you see what I'm talking about, where houses to the ground with trees with leaves on them right next door. Just, just strange, just unusual. Uh, if you're not familiar with this area of California, I used to live there, uh, Sonoma County, Napa County. What's important to note, it's a relatively wealthy area. It's a very progressive area. Back in 2011, when the Occupy protests were going on, uh, Occupy Santa Rosa was actually the third largest Occupy in existence and also one of the longest lasting. Here's a really blatant one. Uh, in addition to the... Um, you know, being a very progressive area, it's also where a great deal of the marijuana in this country is grown. Northern California, Sonoma County, Napa County, Mendocino County, where all these fires are going off. A lot of weed grown there, and I'm sure the pot growers are really not enjoying this situation. Um, I went online to the Cal Fire Inissa web today. You know, like I said, I've kind of, uh, uh, people chiming in, they took out the cannabis industry. There I just post pasted a link in. This is the Cal Fire incident map. And what's crazy, all these fires started at about the same time. I'm going to just read them off real quick. 
The Redwood Potter Fire in Mendocino Lake Complex. Date started, it's 34,000 acres, 20% contained. It started on October 8th at 10.36 p.m. Okay, so late night on October 8th. The next fire, the Sulphur Fire, the Mendocino Lake Complex, 2,500 2, acres, 65% contained. It started on October 8th at 11.59 p.m., so within a matter of an hour and a half. The next fire, the Pocket Fire, Central LNU Complex, it started on October 9th at 3.30 a.m. So those other fires started around 10 p.m. This one started about five hours later, but on the same night. That's the key thing to consider here. Again, the Washington Post reporting that there are more than 20 fires that all seem to have started around the, on the same time. But on the Cal Fire, Cal.gov, Cal Fire incident website, uh, I'm getting about 10 come up here. The Tubbs Fire, 35,000 acres, 44% contained, started on October 8th at 9.45 p.m. So same thing. They're all starting between 9.45 and 4 a.m. on that night. The Nuns Adobe Norbloom Presley Patrick Fire, so that's five fires in one. 46,000 acres, 10% contained. This thing's still raging out of control. It started on October 8th at 10 p.m., so within 15 minutes of the fire we just discussed. Another fire coming straight from Cal.gov, the Atlas Fire, 50,000 acres, 45% contained, started on October 8th at 9.52 p.m. So same time frame, same night. This is not normal for all these fires to be starting at exactly the same time or within a five hour span. The Lobo fire, 821 acres, so not quite as big, not near as big, but this one started October 9th at 12.01 a.m. So within that same five or six hour window. The Cascade fire, 9,961 acres, started on October 8th at 11.03 p.m., same thing. All these fires started either late on October 8th or early on October 9th. The Laporte Fire, 6,000 acres, started on October 9th at 12.57 a.m. That's straight from Cal Fire on CA.gov. The Cherokee Fire, 8,000 acres, 75% contained. One of the few fires they seem to be winning against. Started October 8th, 9.45 p.m. And the last fire for you, the Honey Fire, 150 acres started on October 9th at 3.05 p.m. So all these fires in the North Bay, in Sonoma County, Mendo County, Napa County, Humboldt County, all seem to have started between 9.45 p.m. on October 8th and 3.30 a.m. on October 9th. It's just unusual, and it prompts the question, is this some sort of staged event, you know? Interestingly, what happens? Um, you know, wow, the wine industry taking a huge hit, the weed industry taking a huge hit. Again, this area of California where I lived in 2011, 2012, people are pretty aware out there. All the way back then, people were fighting against the smart meters, okay? People were, a large percentage of the population was already aware of the geoengineering programs. You can, uh, you know, I'd go to the grocery store and there'd be anti-geoengineering flyers at the grocery store. I'd be driving down the highway and there would be refuse smart meter signs on the side of the road. So this is an extremely progressive and aware part of the country, arguably the most progressive. Again, it was, the Occupy Santa Rosa was the third largest Occupy encampment in the U.S. back then too. So... A lot of people out there know what's going on. A lot of people are making money from selling dope. A lot of people are making money from permaculture farms. It's one of the most, you know, this whole region, very wealthy region of California, very aware and spiritual and permaculture, sustainability-oriented region of California, arguably the organic garden of the West Coast of the United States. It's in flames. Really strange. Uh, really strange. Uh, Dane Wigington at Geoengineering Watch. Again, a lot of people, you know, I kind of took, I take Dane with a grain of salt, but at the same time, he might know more about this topic than I do. Uh, and when I listen to his global alert news that he puts out, he's not afraid to take on 
you know, 9-11. He's not afraid to take on the military industrial complex, the vaccine issue, the poisonous foods, and certainly geoengineering. On October 11th, just a couple days ago, Dane reported, you know, in addition to pondering the question of whether directed energy weapons are responsible for this ongoing firestorm, uh, Dane has put out a great video here. Geoengine geoengineering is fueling the firestorm catastrophes. I'm going to paste that link into the comments right now. I'm going to read this to you, too. All official sources are blaming the increasingly extreme and deadly wildfire behavior on global warming alone. But is that the full truth? What are official sources not telling us about the increasingly destructive wildfires? Illegal, glomit, cli, illegal, yeah, excuse me, illegal global climate engineering solar radiation management operations are a primary causal factor that is fueling catastrophic wildfires all over the globe. Climate engineering is completely disrupting the hydrological cycle, uh, triggering increasing dry lightning, destroying the ozone layer, contaminating soils, and covering everything at ground level with an incendiary dust due to the fallout from atmospheric spraying programs. It goes on and on. There's a video here, um, and it's just some really blatant imagery of geoengineering taking place. Again, I posted a link in there earlier from aircraft.org where Alina Freeland, Freeland is poster, or pondering the question if these are the result of directed energy weapons. Okay, a lot of people have. You can see from this drone footage, as I stated earlier, it's really unusual that these houses are gone. Cars, gone. Burned, you know, the tires are completely gone, the windshields are completely gone. It looks like these cars went through a furnace. But then right next to them, there'll be a plastic mailbox totally untouched, or a plastic trash can or recycling bin that doesn't even look like it got hurt at all. There'll be trees right there that still have green leaves on them and a house right next door to one that was utterly destroyed, brought down to the foundation, uh, totally fine. So really unusual stuff. I'm gonna paste that link in again. They got some great imagery in here too. So yeah, check it out. Thank you all for tuning in. I think I've done enough on that topic. There's the aircraft link. And here's one more link for you all. I Google searched house fire aftermath, right? And what you see, you know, granted a lot of these fires, obviously, uh, you know, a fire truck came or the fire team responded and put it out. But even in situations where houses like were totally burned, there's usually still like there'll still be some standing bricks in addition to fireplaces. There'll still be some structural timbers standing because you know, it takes a lot of fire to burn through like a four by four column or a six by eight column, things like that. So it's unusual to see whole neighborhoods utterly burned to the ground while right next door, there are houses that are totally fine. And again, check out that Dr. Judy Wood shows justification in the wake of 9-11 from the uh, Breakthrough Energy Movement Conference in... 2013. I actually attended that conference out in Boulder, Colorado around the same time, but uh, I think it was 2013, maybe 2014 when I was there. It doesn't look like they are doing those conferences anymore, which is too bad because it was really an eye-opening thing on the topic of suppressed energy technologies, etc. Sherry Lawler, Waltz, chiming in, oops, discernment needed. Uh, David Cocorica, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all these comments. Um, you know, again, I'm not 100%, you know, I'm not saying with 100% certainty that directed energy weapons were used in California, but at the same time, it's just, it's unusual. It gets me thinking and it gets me revisiting the theories of folks like Dr. Judy Wood. Um, so yeah, if you have time, if you're bored, Watch that video because it's some crazy stuff. It's about a two-hour presentation. Uh, Daniel Riker chiming in, no sound, no picture. Anybody else um, uh, having trouble seeing the video? Let me know if so. Maybe I'll bail out of here and try starting again. I'm going to turn off my audio here because it is beeping up a storm back there. There we go. 
But uh, moving along, moving along, thank you so much for tuning in. I want to say thanks again. David Coca, Rico Sedano, thank you so much for your support on Patreon. Same to Brian Peterson, um, Jill up in Montana, Zach Coons from Wake Up News even contributing, and Evan Sampson from here in Idaho. That's my Patreon page if you want to help out. Now that we've covered this California thing, I should mention to the geostorm thing. It's crazy. On October 20th, you know, less than a week from now, next Friday, the Hollywood blockbuster geostorm is coming out. And the, you know, the premise of this movie is that the government has developed space based mitigation technologies to save the planet from climate change, right? Of course, some bad actor hacks into the system and takes control of it because the government would never do anything to hurt people, right? Disregard, you know, World War I, World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, Gulf War I, Gulf War II, drone warfare all over the world, uh, you know, the EPA not doing its job, toxins in the food, toxins in the water, toxins raining down out of the sky. The government would never do anything to hurt you. You know, these programs would only be implemented to save the planet. And uh, that's the premise of the movie, right? So, you know, I'm probably going to check out the movie Geostorm and report on that, you know, kind of assess that uh, rip it shreds, so to speak. So hopefully you all will tune in for that video as well. Let's take a look at the Jackson Hole Daily. On the weekend edition, they tend to be even a little more fluffy than usual. Uh, the Interior Part Department of the Interior is going after the National Park Service because they're a bunch of sexist uh, folks there, just like Hollywood. Skinny horses examined. Looks like these horses were sick, not abused, like the ones who were intentionally killed by Creeper Forest Stearns. Appropriately enough, Teton County's emergency manager, Richard Oaks, has been named Citizen of the Year in Jackson Hole by the Jackson Hole Chamber of Commerce. I actually know Rich pretty well because I got cert certified several years ago through FEMA just to see what it was all about. Rich, you might have your hands full. Uh, big props out to Kristen, Krista Valentino. Good climbing with you this summer. And Terry Ray, I've been missing you, Terry. Thank you for helping me box up those paintings earlier this year. Terry, the owner of a beautiful art gallery, West Lives On uh, Gallery up in Jackson. So congratulations to all of them for being voted Citizen of the Year. Zach Brown is not coming back to town uh, for the Jackson Hole Mountain Festival. Now more than ever, all societies need local journalists. Ain't that the truth? That's what we're trying to get going here at Wake Up Wyoming. You know, showing you the local news, showing you the national news, the international news, giving you commentary, asking the questions the mainstream media can't touch because they'll lose their funding. Um, yeah. So that's that. A Texas couple stranded for six days in Utah. Got out alive in an elderly couple, so glad to hear they're okay. Of course, the people in Puerto Rico, Northern California, folks getting drone bombed all over the world, not doing so well. Increase in Alzheimer's rate takes personal toll. Okay, this is out of Utah. Uh, yeah, early onset Alzheimer's, a real deal. Those of you out there listening, thank you so much for tuning in. Detox, detox, detox. Take care of yourselves. If you got access to a sauna, use it. If you don't have access to a sauna, try to find one. Uh, try to check out EDTA chelation therapy. Check out the detoxification properties of cilantro. Get yourself a damn good air filter. Get yourself a damn good water filter. And try to eat the healthiest food you can get your hands on. Because... We're living in the midst of a depopulation agenda. Hate to say it, hate to admit it, but it's true. The Affordable Care Act, as expected, the ACA is taking a hard hit. Trump defunding it, okay? The jolts, it's going to jolt health consumers. President Trump's abrupt move to cut off federal payments to insurers jolted America's health care and political worlds alike on Friday, threatening to boost premiums for millions of Americans disrupt insurance markets, and shove Republicans into a renewed civil war whoa, over the air efforts to shred Obamacare. Um, so they're cutting funding to this money that would go to companies for lowering out-of-pocket costs like co-payments and deductibles.
for low and middle income customers. Uh, these programs are intended to help more than six million people and cost about seven billion dollars annually. The National Association of Insurance Commissioners estimates that Trump's move will produce a 12 to 15 percent upsurge in premiums. Experts say the political instability over Trump's effort to undermine Obama's health care law could also prompt more insurers to leave markets. As Trump frequently points out, next year, about half of U.S. counties will have only one insurer on Obamacare's online marketplaces, up from one-third of counties with one carrier in 2017. So long story short, we've all been roped into the medical system, right? So many people were cheering Obamacare. It's going to save health care in the United States. The Affordable Care Act, not really affordable, not really careful. What happens, though, as soon as we're all stuck, either paying a huge tax penalty or paying a lot of money for health insurance, the government jacks up the rates. In states like Idaho and Wyoming, they're estimating that premiums for low-income people will be going up by as much as 44, excuse me, 48% next year uh, due to the uncertainty. Uh, Cubans don't believe sonic attack on U.S. officials. Uh, you know, that's been an issue for a while. Interestingly, it kind of seems like all Americans are subjected to a sonic attack. I would have put this show out a little sooner today, but I must have not didn't sleep very well last night because I had about four tones of ringing in my ears. Does anybody else experience that problem? It's frustrating. Most nights I actually go camping because I sleep so much better out in the woods. I have such better dreams, more vivid dreams, deeper sleep. I'm so much happier when I, and I feel so much more rested when I go out and get away from cell signals, smart meters, smartphones, Wi-Fi, and all that, and go sleep in the woods. Of course, last night here in Idaho, it, it was like a rain-snow mix. I didn't really want to go out into the cold, wet, so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to hunker down here in the homestead for the night. Slept like shit. Slept like shit. Anybody else have that problem? It's frustrating. For me, I've never really had a problem sleeping well. Never heard voices in my head except for my own. I've never really had problems with tinnitus until the last couple of years. A uh, glimmer of hope seen in the battle to contain fire. We've already done plenty of coverage on that. Again, over 35 people killed, hundreds missing, over 5,000 structures burned, and unusually a lot of these structures are taken to the ground, while the trees, plastic trash cans, other houses right next door are totally fine. So it's weird. Um, in investment news, okay, this is interesting. Now these fires, you know, they need to blame somebody for all these fires igniting at the same time, right? Uh, several fires. The Washington Post today reporting 22 fires, but actually now they're saying it's 21 because two giant fires merged. So technically they're one fire now. But, you know, mainstream media reporting 22 fires that started between 9.30 p.m. on October 8th and 3.30 a.m. on October 9th. And who's taking the blame for that? It looks like PG&E. You know, you always need a patsy. You always need a scapegoat. Here in the business section, we see that. Utility PG&E, Pacific Gas and Electric, that's a California electrical utility, continued to tumble as investors wondered if the company will face penalties connected to the California wildfires. Officials said this week they are investigating the possibility that downed power lines or other faulty equipment touched off the fires, which have killed 31 people and destroyed at least 3,500 homes since Sunday. Again, they all started Sunday. Uh, but now that number up to 35 people, still hundreds missing, 5,000 structures burned. PG&E stock dropped 6.7% Thursday. That's a big drop and fell another 10.5% on Friday. City investment research analyst Prafal Meta said, the company lost $2.2 billion in value on Thursday alone, so they lost an additional several billion dollars in value on Friday, and even if PG&E were found responsible and grossly negligent for the fires, he said it probably wouldn't be fined much more than that. Okay, so PG&E getting blamed for the fires. Um, 
I don't know. You know, there were some strong winds. But interestingly, at the same time that these fires were starting, there are a lot of reports on the ground from people that they saw, you know, there was they call it dry lightning, like bolts from the blue. A lot of people reported on the ground they were seeing these weird blue lights in the sky, much like we saw over Fukushima, much like we saw in the recent earthquakes in Mexico. And then, you know, they talk about bolts from the blue starting these fires, not faulty electrical equipment. Um, so I find it pretty hard to believe that enough power lines or transformers or substations or whatever malfunction simultaneously to start 22 fires on the same night. But if they're going to blame PG&E, it's kind of like the mainstream blaming uh, Paddock for the Las Vegas shooting. Let's take a look at that. Um, Zero Hedge reporting two days ago that the Vegas shooter complained about loud country music the night before the killing rampage. So maybe there's the motive, but I doubt it. Um, really interesting, the Mandalay Bay security guard, Jesus Campos, has disappeared. Um, Campos was booked for five interviews on Thursday night, all of which were mysteriously canceled. As of Friday, his whereabouts are un reportedly unknown. Okay, this is coming from RT USA. ABC News journalist Stephanie Wash who was present to interview Campos on Thursday night, tweeted that the guard had left before their interview. We were in a room and we came out and he was gone. Uh, ABC News journalist Wash tweeted late on Thursday. Um, interestingly, folks, Laura Loomer, investigative reporter Laura Loomer, went to Jesus Campos' house after it was reported that he canceled his interviews uh, an interview with Hannity specifically. She filmed a Periscope live stream of a woman at the door who told her that she was not allowed to talk. Uh, so there's a video there. Interestingly, that video will not play for me today. Um, word has it. And Laura Loomer was banned from attending the press conference. Laura Loomer, keep up the good fight. Thanks for being on the ground there in Vegas uh, telling us more about the situation. Uh, Jackson Hole Daily even reporting today. Uh, wow, we got a lot of paper here. Hold on, bear with me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stoked to have 104 viewers. That this, the official story on Vegas changing again. You know, the mainstream media loves changing the story. Of course, anybody that questions the official story or asks, you know, critically analyzes it in any way is labeled a conspiracy theorist, is labeled a you know un-American bastard, is labeled fake news, whatever you want to call us in the independent media. You know, if I had a dime for every time I was a conspiracy theorist, or every time I was called a conspiracy theorist, I wouldn't be asking for any help via Patreon, I'll tell you that. I'd be doing just fine. Uh, but uh, they have some coverage on the Las Vegas shooting in here. A real small little blurb. Ah, the timeline shifts again in the Vegas shooting rampage. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, da, da. Yeah, there's not really anything too interesting in there. You know, they're saying that he, you know, the big news is, according to the police the other day, they said he opened fire on the hallway, the 32nd floor hallway, sprayed the hallway with 200 rounds six minutes before he opened fire on the crowd, which prompts the obvious question, why, after he opened fire on the crowd, did it take police an additional 72 minutes to get up there and breach the room, right? Doesn't make any sense. So, uh, Angel Garcia is chiming in, el gobierno quieren que entre más ignorantes seamos mejor para les ellos para seguir la pando el cerebro de las personas ojo mi gente por eso la edu educación cuesta si sí, verdad es carísimo la educación no por eso todos somos estúpidos pero con el internet podemos hablar libre a veces might as well go on to puerto rico there um because you know whatever now the police changing the story saying there was no six minute gap I don't know. But moving on to Puerto Rico. 
desperate Puerto Ricans. Oh, they love, man, these mainstream websites are so annoying because as soon as you open them, it starts playing you some random ass video. CNN reporting today that desperate Puerto Ricans are drinking water from a hazardous waste site. Okay, super sad to hear. In Dorado, Puerto Rico, Jose Luis Rodriguez waited in line Friday to fill plastic jugs in the back of his pickup truck with water for drinking, doing the dishes, and bathing. But there is something about this water Rodriguez didn't know. It was being pumped to him by water authorities from a federally designated hazardous waste site. CNN learned after reviewing super fun documents and interviewing federal and local officials. Rodriguez, 66, is so desperate for the water, they have no water, that the news didn't startle him. I don't have a choice, he said. This is the only option I have. More than three weeks after Hurricane Maria ravaged the island, more than 35% of the island's residents, American citizens, remain without safe drinking water. In announcing the addition of the Dorado site to the Superfund program, you know, the Superfund sites are like serious places that need to be cleaned up. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency says the area was polluted with industrial chemicals, including tetrachloroethylene and trichloroethylene, which can have serious health impacts, including damage to the liver and increasing the risk of cancer, according to the EPA. More Puerto Rico news, according to NPR, reporting yesterday, Isabel Dobrin. Get us out of here. Amid broken infrastructure, Puerto Ricans flee to Florida. Three weeks after the storm wiped out the island's power grid, less than 20% of people have electricity and only 64% have drinking water. So, you know, 80% of the island is without electricity uh, and a third of the population of Puerto Rico does not have access to clean water. Thousands of Puerto Ricos have poured into Florida after Hurricane Maria. More than 27,000 people have arrived through Port Everglades and the Miami and Orlando airports alone since October 3rd, according to the governor's office. Some will stay temporarily until power and water are largely restored across the island, but many are coming to the Sunshine State to rebuild their lives. Uh, roughly 80, interestingly, historically, there has, been a tr there has been a trend of Puerto Ricans leaving the island because there's no, you know, it's economically depressed. The country has been slammed into poverty. It's, it's an international tax haven, and the economy has been faltering for a long time. Now, Hurricane Maria, arguably a geoengineered storm, right? The technology exists to steer hurricanes. The technology exists to weaken hurricanes. The technology also exists to use the weather as a weapon. So, kind of looks like Puerto Rico got weather weaponed, weather ward, right? But roughly 80,000 people have moved to the U.S. from Puerto Rico per year in the last two years. That's up from just five years ago when closer to 50,000 people were migrating per year. Fernandez attributes the increase to the mounting unrest among residents as federal appointees reckon with the island's financial crisis with their decisions often dealing blows to the workforce. Okay, Puerto Rico under an austerity program, much like we saw in the pigs countries, Portugal, um, what's the I? Italy, Greece, and Spain in the wake of the 2008-2009 financial crisis. Interestingly, you know, Trump, the boys in the White House could be helping out the Puerto Ricans. I'm dropping a link in there right now. They could have sent this aircraft carrier with 7,500 sailors and Marines aboard to Puerto Rico to help with the recovery, but instead it's going to the Korean Peninsula. Okay, Trump sends second aircraft carrier to Korean Peninsula with 7,500 sailors and Marines aboard. Just one week after uttering his now infamous, this is the calm before the storm statement at a press, to the press ahead of a dinner with military leaders we now learn that President Trump has dispatched a second nuclear aircraft carrier, the USS Theodore Roosevelt, filled with 7,500 Marines to the Korean Peninsula. 
Of course, this comes after rumors swirled earlier this week that North Korea is preparing to fire multiple short-range rockets around the opening of the Chinese Communist Party's twice-a-decade Congress on October 18th. On and on, long story short, a lot of fear-mongering surrounding the situation in North Korea. But, you know, why aren't we sending more help to Puerto Rico? Here's an image of where all the big old ships are right now. Um, so, yeah, sad to see. Plenty of money for war, no money to feed the poor, so to speak. Uh, not really anything funny in the cartoons. Sports section, the biggest distraction and diversion of all time. David, others, I know you like sports. You know you like sports, that's fine with me. But uh, important to find that balance. Anybody watching this video probably has got their shit together pretty well when it comes to finding that balance between family, friends, work, entertainment, and informative stuff like this. We try to bridge the gap between entertainment and informativeness here at Wake Up Wyoming. Uh, what else is going on? J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon unexpectedly reverses his position on Bitcoin. I'm not telling you to buy Bitcoin, but I will say it's certainly a good way to make some extra money if you keep a close eye on it, buy low, sell high. Bitcoin at all-time record highs, once again, $5,628 per Bitcoin. <laughs> Crazy. A couple months ago, it dropped to $2,000, then it sprung up to almost $5,000, dropped back down to $2,800. Now it's double that. Again, it's doubled in value again over the course of a couple of weeks up to $5,628, okay? I don't know if these cryptocurrencies are a good thing. I don't know if they're the solution to the central banksters cartel controlling our currency, keeping us all, uh, you know, keeping us all tied to their slave currencies, debt-based financial, you know, fiat currency backed by nothing but the confidence we have in the government and the central banks, which diminishes more every day. But uh, yeah, cryptocurrency is obviously something to keep an eye on. In other news, the Russiagate situation has gotten so ridiculous. CNN loses its mind, claims Russia used Pokemon Go in their efforts to influence the election through liberal activism. You can't even make this shit up. So there's your mainstream media for you. They're concerned about the Russians using Pokemon Go to manipulate the election while California is burning. You know, hundreds of people missing, thousands of structures burn, dozens of fires going. Strangely, they all started at the same time. That's kind of weird. And, uh, you know, not very many of them are contained. Uh, in addition, these fires in California look pretty odd. Again, if you haven't... Uh, looked into it check out dr. Judy Woods coverage there of the situation in the wake of 9-11 her powerful presentation about the strange justification of the towers uh, cars burned up blocks from the epicenter there from the World Trade Center it goes on and on um, Tammy Farrell chiming in cryptocurrency, not Mark of the Beast. Stepping stone, maybe, but don't knock it before you try it, right? Uh, Sibion, Sioban, Blaschek chiming in, try cocoa, cocoa, cocoa for a good sleep, Max. I will. Um, Andy Pascal asking, what's the better option than cryptos? I don't know. I guess, you know, it seems with, you know, even if cryptocurrencies are the solution, a lot of people are just investing in them for the short term profits, right? So it's important to keep an eye on it, buy low, sell high, whatever you do. Um, and I wouldn't put my life savings into cryptos. If I had one, you know, you need a, what you need, you need your, bo your beans, your bullion, and your bullets. Those are the big three. So, you know, you want to have some of your money invested into putting things away for a rainy day. You know, I think everybody should have at least a couple months worth of basic food supply on hand, some drinking water, especially if you live in an urban area. Uh, you know, probably good to have a gun these days. I don't know. I'm thinking about doing a, a video on that topic. The 
six best guns for the apocalypse or the revolution, whichever comes first. I'm curious what you all think about that. I could piece that together real quick. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, Siobhan. Thank you, Siobhan, for clarifying that for me. You know, it's cool. I've had a bunch more Irish people tuning in. Uh, David Levy, Jerry Wallace, you know, gold, silver and gold. Yeah. I'd say silver is probably a better bet because – if there is some sort of, well, I mean, I don't know. Everybody's got their own opinion on that. Maybe good to have a little gold, a little silver, but that shit's expensive, right? Better to take care of yourselves and your families in the here and now than throw all your money into an uncertain future, right? We got to live in the moment. We can't live completely out of fear. I know back in 2009, 2010, 2011, into 2012, I was so fearful that I actually like wanted to get the fuck out of the northern hemisphere entirely. In 2008, I bought a sailboat for 5,000 bucks out in Portland, Oregon. And I was trying to sail my ass down to Patagonian, Argentina uh, to marry this Argentinian girl. Que pasa Alejandra? Uh, we're still friends. But she was going to help me get my citizenship there. I was going to help her get her citizenship here. Had a best friend down there, Chino. Rest in peace, Chino. I still miss you every day, bud. Uh, but we made it as far as Colombia before uh, we ran into some opportunistic fishermen and decided it'd probably be a good idea not to keep going down the relatively remote coast of uh, Pacific Colombia. Crazy place there. Absolutely wild. It's one of the rainiest places on the planet. Most of these towns have no roads. We were just getting into the area where there's lots of mangroves and rivers that flow out into the Pacific. Much more convenient location to hijack some gringos. And we kind of ran into some of that. So we turned around, went back to Central America, went surfing. But then I came back to the U.S., kept learning more and more about the situation on this planet. And that made me even more scared, more fearful. So I went full prepper mode for the next several years. I'm sitting pretty good if shit hits the fan. But at the same time, wow, I've been sitting on that stuff for five, six years now. Hopefully everything just stays copacetic, you know. A lot of people are calling for, like, a violent revolution, but I don't think we want that. You know, I think it's better to, like, do the information war, to try to win this thing peacefully. Bob Marley said it pretty well. If you want to win the revolution, you must win it with Rasta. If you win any other way, you're going to fight again, right? And... You know, all these, you know, a lot of people are like, yeah, man, get all your preps together, get your AR-15 and a couple thousand rounds, your bulletproof vest and all this shit. But I'm pretty sure, like, looking at how the the government has operated in the past, if shit really hit the fan, I think you'd have to be more concerned about dying from, like, diarrhea or a respiratory ailment than from getting shot by somebody. Or, you know, you'd be more concerned about your house getting burned down with a space-based directed energy weapon like we may be seeing out in California right now. So my gut tells me it's probably better that we focus on the moment, focus on shining light into the darkness, focus on keeping it peaceful, keeping it optimistic, and, you know, exposing the powers that shouldn't be for what they are, exposing these corrupt agendas in real time every day because I know I'd rather that the world remained a relatively peaceful and safe place, you know, at least in the short term future. Yeah, it's like it sucks getting poisoned with toxic food, it sucks getting poisoned with toxic water, it sucks getting poisoned with toxic air, toxic medicines. The list goes on and on, but at the same time, toxic, you know, electro smog. But at the same time, these things are largely avoidable. And I don't know if the vast majority of Americans don't want to wake up to it. Like, what can we do about it? Right. I know I'm not ready to take to the streets and start shooting people. That's for sure. We'll leave that to the FBI when they foil their own FBI plotted terror plots. Right. Thank you all for tuning in. Horoscopes, horoscopes. Uh, Andy Palasco chime in. Opt out of their systems. Don't fight. Go around. Yeah. Very good point. Roy Douglas Brewer Jr. saying, be likable? Absolutely, right? So many people who are aware 
fall into this trap. I know I did it for years where it's like, I got this shit on my mind. I got to get it out there. So I would just overwhelm people that weren't receptive with all this information that they weren't ready to receive. And it just fried them out with cognitive dissonance. They didn't know what to do. Uh, it serves to alienate more people than wake them up. Um, Siobhan chiming in, learn to live like there is no power. Fires for cooking, uh, sewing clothes. Folks need to skill up. Amen. Right? Amen. Uh, lots of great comments there. Thank you. Uh, David Levy, the AR is the last resort for protection for me. It is for me too, David. You know, like I said, I'm strapped up, but I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to throw down. So yeah. Oh, people are getting, they want their scorps. People are fired up. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. All right. I got to find the scopes. Got to find the scopes for y'all. Sorry to keep you waiting. I know you just tuned in for that and that alone. <clears throat> and that's great. I'm fine with that. Y'all can do whatever you want. Mario Salazar chiming in. Just be present. Yes. Um, lots of great, great comments there. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right, we're starting with Melissa Spurlock because she was the first one to chime in on the scopes. She wants a Libra. Again, I'm no astrologer, but I read the paper every day, and the horoscopes are often the most interesting thing in there. So. Uh, here we go. Libra, you are having a five-star day. Woo! Be aware of the impact that a recent conversation has had on a friend. This person appreciates how you always seem ready to play devil's advocate. Even though your exchange could be intense, you are likely to have a great time tonight, Melissa, where the action is. Jerry Wallace, thank you as always for tuning in, Jerry. I love seeing you here. I love your comments. And I certainly appreciate your support. You're having a five-star day too, Jerry. Go, you are nothing if not intense, Jerry. That's a good thing. Wherever you go, you exude confidence, intensity, and guess what? Curiosity, Jerry. Others notice you and are drawn to you. You might feel tight financially, welcome to the club, but you will find a way around the issue. Fun doesn't have to cost money, Jerry. You already knew that. Tonight, you're a force to be reckoned with. Brian Peterson, one of my Patreon supporters, it was great talking with you on the phone the other day. Aries, three-star day. I wish it was better, Brian, but that's what it is. Here we go. You might note a gentleness that emanates from a loved one. Maybe that's your brother. You could add extra pizzazz to your interactions with this person. News from a distance could cause you to gain a fresh perspective. Maybe that's me which you might find difficult to embrace on some level. Tonight, paint the town red. That's right, red, Brian. I think they mean that literally. So get your spray paint together and have some fun with it. Siobhan, looking for the Taurus. Siobhan, thank you for teaching me how to pronounce your name, you beautiful Irish person. I don't even know if you're a man or a woman. I love all these Gaelic names. It's cool to see so many Scots and Irish men and women tuning in because beautiful place. Powerful people. I got a little Scottish blood in me myself. Uh, Taurus, I'm a Taurus too. We're having a four-star day, Siobhan. You'll make an effort to make a loved one feel nurtured and loved. Do your best to indulge this person with his or her favorite activities and interests. Hmm. You are likely to achieve your goal by dedicating this day to this person. Tonight, refuse to let anyone rain on your parade. Okay. So we got to get the ball rolling on dedicating our days to loved ones, Siobhan. Uh, let's do that. Joel Cleland, looking for Capricorn. Here we go, Joel. Thank you for tuning in. As always, Joel, it's a four-star day. You want someone else to share more of him or herself. Asking this person questions might feel intrusive, so listen well instead, as it could encourage him or her to reveal more. Do not make a situation more difficult than it already is. Tonight, out with a favorite person. Kate Catanella, hello to you too. Daniel Reichert, looking for the Pisces. What did you put in there? Is that the all-seeing eye you threw down there? You're always throwing me for a loop, Daniel, and I like that. Keep me on my toes. You are having a four-star day, Daniel. You might want to complete a project or two. You also might decide to include a friend in what you are doing. A boss, relative, or older friend could be difficult. Consider what it would be like to walk in this person's shoes before you make any judgments. Tonight, a must appearance. 
Sherry Lawler Waltz, thanks for tuning in. Sherry, love having you here. We're looking for Gemini for you. Five star day, Sherry. Hope you enjoy it. Reach out to a neighbor or relative with whom you might need to spend some time. Understand that this person could be distancing him or herself. The good news is that this behavior will be changing soon. I lost my spot. Hang in there. Tonight, share some good news with a friend. Annie Pechneo, Pechneo, how do I pronounce your name, Annie? Fill me in. I, I like when I can pronounce people's names properly. It embarrasses the hell out of me. Um, Scorpio, I already read that one, but I'll read it again for you. Five-star day. You are nothing if not intense, just like Jerry. Wherever you go, you exude confidence, intensity, and curiosity. Others notice you and are drawn to you. You might feel tight financially, but you will find a way around the issue. Fun doesn't have to cost money, asked Jerry. Tonight, you're a force to be reckoned with. Cecilia, I already read Taurus once, uh, and I probably shouldn't uh, do it again. Uh, Matthew Warner chiming in. Before tuning in, I was re-watching The Matrix. Very powerful movie, isn't it? Jerry and Durbin Fairman chiming in. Not so. I tune in to hear your opinions. I could check my Zodiac online. Right. That's why I always, you know, now I'm saving the scopes till the end. So only the real diehards that really want those scopes read aloud uh, get them. Um, so Jerry Ann, looking for Sag. Four-star day. Don't become upset if you don't get your way. Go along with the moment. You have confidence that you are valued. You might be working your way out of a difficult period. Know that it is ending, but probably not for another day or two. So hang in there, Jerry Ann. Tonight, try out a new restaurant. Uh, David Levy chiming in. Max, I am working on testing air and water. We'll be in touch. Thank you, David. I really appreciated you sending me those videos of the weird phenomenon in the air out there on Long Island where you're at. And I'd love to find out what that weird haze was. I think we have an obligation to get that out to the people. So, uh, Leo, please. Nyla Clancy chiming in. Leo the Lion. Oh, you Leos have got me in. Knots continuously, four-star day. You might feel more confident about a personal matter than you realize. You also might enjoy hosting a get-together at your home. Make it spontaneous with a theme. You'll get into the moment and the preparations. Tonight, visit with a friend whom you rarely see. Uh, Brian, good to hear about the letter. I hope that goes well. Daniel, thanks for tuning in. Sherry, of course I'm spot on. Daniel Riker saying Petch Neo. I don't know what that means. Uh, I already read Sag. Try out a new restaurant tonight, Jerry Ann. Love you too, Sherry Lawler Waltz. Uh, Peter Moss chiming in. Life is short. We are not guaranteed our next breath. Look to Jesus today for your salvation. Amen, brother. You know, Jesus is my homeboy. Um, Melissa Forbes Jones chiming in. My brother was recently talking about buying cigarettes and alcohol for future bartering. Sounds like a decent idea, but I don't know. I think, yeah, you do whatever you want, man. If that's how you roll, if that's how your brother rolls, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be looking for smokes and, and alcohol. The one thing about alcohol, it doesn't go bad. You know, the body, the bottle was dusty, but the liquor was clean. Jason Eisenhart looking for Virgo. Here we go. <coughs> Still fighting that cold. Four-star day, Jason. Thanks, as always, for your presence, your comments. Your words often trigger ideas. You could find yourself in exchange that is both thought-provocative and rewarding. Make fans to make plans to visit with a friend for a late lunch or a fun get-together. Avoid getting into a heavy conversation tonight. Socialize to your heart's content. Uh, Daniel Reichert, thanks for pronouncing that name for me. Now I understand. Zoe Moreno, what's up? Say hi to your dad for me. Angie Eagle wants cancer, but not that kind. Not the kind that... Uh, the pink ribbon wearers are still trying to fight. Remember, folks, marijuana cures cancer. Cancer is avoidable. Get yourself some of that B-17, the G, Edward Griffin's always pushing. Uh, the Laetrile, I think that's how you pronounce it, comes very potently in apricot kernels. I should be eating some of those today. Thanks for the reminder there, Angie. But cancer, as in the horoscope, three-star day. Watch your back, Angie. Love you. Be aware of a tendency to sometimes become overindulgent. I think we've had that problem in the past. Or too focused on a loved one. I know I've had that problem in the past. 
Right now, this person might want to return that same favor, so enjoy it. You need some time for yourself, whether it's to catch up on sleep or take care of some bills. Tonight, Angie, stick to your budget. Uh, Sherry chiming in. I use Phoenix Tears daily for fibromyalgia. I bet that works out pretty well for you. You know, it's, it's wild that we live in a world where you can go to the doctor and get prescribed heroin, opium, opioid painkillers, which kill tens of thousands of Americans annually, very easy to abuse. At the same time, there are these disturbing alternative synthetic, uh, what the heck is that stuff called? That drug that's like heroin, it's like a synthetic heroin that's 50 times more potent. People are dying from that. I heard that Philip Seymour Hoffman, the actor, died from that. Uh, but I'm blanking on the name. Got to watch out for that stuff. I strongly recommend everybody in the audience here, stay off the smack. Stay off the painkillers. The pill pushers are throwing at you. And yeah, try out the weed if you haven't yet. It's pretty good stuff. So I hear. Never tried it myself. Uh, everybody's chiming in. Oxy, yeah. Oxy, but there's another word. What is it called? I'm going to Google it right now because it's driving me crazy. That's the beauty. I got two monitors now. I'm getting real fancy with my whole show here. I would be giving you like the split screen with me down in the corner and the, the monitor, but there's a 10 second lag and I don't see your comments. It's, it's beyond me to do that properly. Uh, what's the synthetic heroin? Thank Sister LaVon back at Catholic schools for teaching me how to type so well. Thank you. Vice News, I don't really cite them too much, although I have to say um, there's a bunch of different ones. You know, Vice is kind of crap. They're worth billions of dollars. They pretend to be independent and edgy. I'm pasting it in. I don't really like Vice, though. Fentanyl, that's it. There's so many different types of fentanyl, too, but the thing is... Ultra, ultra, ultra potent synthetic heroin is spreading across America. And, you know, it's funny. I don't like Vice very much, but I actually saw another art, a video they put out yesterday or the day before going back to the fires in California where California prisons are using inmates to fight the fires. And these inmates are working 24-hour shifts making about a dollar an hour to go out there, put their lives on the line, fighting these fires, breathing in all the toxins from all these homes that are burning down, whatever the heck is getting sprayed in the atmosphere from planes. You know, it's funny, people deny the fact, like, oh, the government would never spray shit out of airplanes, even though his, the historical record proves that. And every time there's a forest fire, they spray fire retardants out of giant C-130s, right? Because spraying shit out of airplanes is a very effective way to spread chemicals where you want them for one reason or another. So I still use the word chemtrails because chemicals are sprayed out of planes for all sorts of reasons. Ah, uh, Siobhan, honey lemon ginger brew for the cold. You probably know that or a traditional Scottish hot toddy. Yeah. What do I like to do? I like, uh, like you say, honey, lemon, ginger. I hit the oil of oregano. That stuff's really good. Grapefruit seed extract. I make this stuff called Crud Buster. I'll give you my Crud Buster recipe right now because anybody who's fighting the chemtrail crud, like uh, Siobhan said there, that's a great recipe, the honey, lemon, ginger. But this is my Crud Buster recipe. Check this out, okay? I take a wide mouth quart mason jar. Okay, so you can use whatever you want, but that's what I use. And I cut up a bunch of garlic, throw it in there. I take a bunch of cayenne pepper powder, pour that in there. Uh, a little bit of oil of oregano, not a lot. A uh, little bit, of, or quite a bit of grapefruit seed. Actually, that comes in a dripper bottle. Put some of that in there. Uh, I fill it up about that far with apple cider vinegar. Put a bunch of honey in there. Squeeze about three lemons in there, whole lemons, right? It's a whole lot of lemon juice. And then I fill that puppy up to the rim with good apple juice, good apple cider. Shake it up just to make it a little more, you know, cut it a little bit. You start drinking that, it kills everything. So I got to start doing that again because, yeah, I'm a little sick. Uh, Brian Gregory chiming in on the topic of heroin, fentanyl, all the opioids. 
Both my cousins died off that poison. Rest in peace, TJ and Sean. Rest in peace, indeed. You know, I lost two friends to drug overdoses in the last year, too. So rest in peace to them as well. And rest in peace to all the people killed in the Las Vegas shooting. Rest in peace to all the people killed in these strange wildfires afflicting California. Rest in peace to people all over the Caribbean uh, that were affected by hurricanes Irma, Harvey, and Maria. Rest in peace to all the people in uh, Central America and the Gulf Coast affected by Hurricane Nate. Rest in peace to all the people in Houston affected by Hurricane Harvey. And the people in Florida affected by Hurricane Irma. Rest in peace to everybody killed through the ongoing illegal wars of aggression in Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq, Libya, you know, whatever the hell's going on in North Korea right now. The list goes on and on. It's crazy. So war is the dumbest thing imaginable. Uh, it's sad to see. Uh, Sherry lawler Wild says, please post the recipe. Um, all right, I will. I'll type it in the comments there. And uh, yeah, but on that note, I think I'm signing off. Once again, I'm trying to do this full time. I know I'm a little wordy, but a lot of people seem to enjoy hanging out with me here online. I certainly enjoy all of you. I've had, you know, I've been doing this for a couple months now. Finally, I had a couple people throw down on my Patreon page. Check it out, okay? In my video that's coming out pretty soon, because people seem to want it, the six best guns for the apocalypse or the revolution, whichever comes first. Here's what I'm thinking. You got your Ruger 1022, right? It's cheap. It's easy. It's semi-automatic 22 long rifle. You got your classic Glock 30, a.k.a. 45 caliber Glock. You got your standard AR-15. Maybe put a scope on that bad dog. You got your Remington 870 shotgun, preferably a tactical or home defense model with the extended barrel. And then the number five, I'm saying, is just like your standard hunting rifle, whether it's the 30 odd 6 the 308, or my personal favorite, the old school Russian Mosin Nagat, because those are real cheap, 100 bucks. But the sixth gun for the apocalypse or the Revan, revolution, whichever comes first, is the truth gun, right? The media. The media. We got to replace the media. They're not doing their jobs. The fourth estate of the government is dead, right? Wrote a term paper about this long ago. Let's see if I can find it. <clears throat> Where is it? I got way too many books. Anyway, long ago, I don't know where it is at the moment, but I just went home, visited my parents, and found all my old term papers and stuff. All the way back in 2000, my freshman year at St. John's University, studying communication, philosophy, and pre-med, my teachers were already warning me about the concentration and conglomeration of corporate mega media. So I wrote a paper on it all the way back then. I've been thinking about this shit for a very long time. And the best way forward is independent media. So please check out my Patreon if you can afford to throw me a buck or three or whatever per month. Guess what? That allows me to do this. And I have to say, like in my previous life, I was a bartender. I hated it. Most of the time, felt like I wasn't really fulfilling my life's purpose, but it sure paid well, and it sure was nice to not be worried about money all the time. And I got a little money saved up, but quickly, well, not quickly, I'm learning to be even thriftier than I was before, and that's kind of fun, but at the same time, it would be nice to have some money coming in to push this thing forward. Any money you throw towards me is going towards making this show better, going on the road to see what's really going on. You know, I'd love to go to places like California where the fire just happened, or Las Vegas, like the day after the shooting. I'm a young guy, I'm willing to fucking hop in the truck and rally, drive 15 hours to go find out. And uh, with your support, I can do stuff like that. And I'll take my cute little dog with me too, we'll have a great time sticking it to the man, informing the people. So, that's a little pitch. I'm signing off, y'all stay active. Stay positive, stay informed, take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones, and let's keep fighting this thing. One love. Peace.